Hello everyone, Gene Netsch here with Eureka Demics, and today I'm going to get you ready for your pre-calculus exam tomorrow on finding zeros of polynomials. We're going to cover some graphing, how to find the zeros of the polynomials, uh, how to use the rational zero test theorem, long and synthetic division. So here are your practice problems. Number 11, you had to graph 5x to the 6th. You would put it in your calculator. It's going to be a very, very tight kind of x squared like function because of the 5 in this. This is a negative cube, so it's going down instead of coming up, and uh, the 8 also shrinks it. Uh, this is number 25. Sorry, you got cut off. So uh, we have this equation, x cubed minus 7x squared plus 12x equals 0. It has three zeros because it's a power to the 3 equation. Uh, first factor out an x, then you're left with this uh, trinomial, then you just factor it because negative 4, negative 3. Uh, so those are your roots. 0, 4, 3. Done. Uh, number 27. So this guy breaks up into two binomials. It was x squared minus 9, x squared minus 1, and each binomial breaks down further because it's a perfect difference of squares, and then you get your x's. Uh, number 31 uh, was long division. Uh, sorry, my answer's cut off. So we have, there's your polynomial, x cubed plus 8x squared. And then notice you have to insert an x term. So I put minus 0x minus 5 because this one uh, didn't have it in the, in the problem. See? And then there's your binomial on the outside. So your first question is, how do I make an x look like an x cubed? Well, you multiply it by x squared. So you write that over there, and then you go ahead and do it. So hit x with x squared, you get x squared or x cubed, I mean, and then hit x squared with negative 2, you get negative 2x squared. Then you subtract that, you get 10x squared, drop the minus 0x, repeat the process. How do I make an x look like a 10x squared? Well, I multiply by 10x, repeat the process, you get 10x squared minus 20x, subtract it, drop it down, so there's negative 20x, how does this thing go away? You drop the 5, uh, and then you ask yourself, how do I make an x look like a 20x? Well, multiply it by 20, and then you have a remainder of 35, and then you just do plus 35 over the bin binomial. And that's that. Number 33, again, long division. We're going to stick the polynomial in here. We're going to stick the divisor on the outside, and you're going to follow the same steps. So how do I make like uh, 2x look like 2x to the fifth? Well, you multiply by x to the fourth, and then you kind of run down that whole process. And then notice over here, so... When I drop the negative 18, nothing kind of works, so I drop the negative 10, get a double step, and that reproduce that. So try to work that one out, put pause, and check yourself to make sure you get the same answer. All right, 34 is synthetic division. It's the same thing as long division, but it's kind of like a shortcut, the quicker way. Uh, so we just we write the coefficients right here. So there's 1, negative 8, 7, negative 15. And then here, you just have to solve for the factor. So if this was x minus 1 equals 0, we would say x is 1. So that's where you put your factor solved, your answer here. So you drop the 1, then you multiply 1 times 1, put it right there, add them up, you get negative 7. Times 1, put that right there, add them up, 0. Times 1, put that there, add them up, you get negative 15. And then there's your remainder, negative 15 over the binomial. And then you just use your coefficients to construct a new polynomial with one power less. So I start with x squared minus 7x minus the remainder, 15 over that. All right, so try 34 and 35. Put pause and make sure you get the same answer. You can also check in later. I didn't check, so I don't know. So here's 37, synthetic division again. So the 3 goes on the outside. We put our coefficients on the inside. And then because 3, it, I didn't get a 0 down here after I did the synthetic division. It's not a 0 of the polynomial, and that answers the question. Uh, 39 are these two uh, zeros, so we would test them using synthetic division. Put your coefficients in, test negative 1. If you get a 0, which I did, it is a 0 of the polynomial. And then I did the same thing with 2. I tested it, and then remember the sign flips because you have to solve it. These are the answers, so x is 2, right? So I got a 0 again, boom, bam. So both of them are roots, and then I factored those roots out. You just rewrite this, so there it is. Uh, it's two powers less because I divided twice, so we start. We go down to the second. It's x squared minus x minus two, and then those factor, and then those. There they are. So that's how thirty-nine works. 
Now, 40 is where it gets a little bit tricky. So they'll give you an equation like this, x cubed minus 14, x minus 15. Uh, so there I added the x squared term, right, to get me ready. So you're going to do your PQ test to figure out all the different possibilities of the roots, and then you actually have to test them using synthetic division. So the way you get all possible roots, you take a P, the P, which is like the last term, the constant, break it up into all of its factors, 15, 1, 5, and 3, plus or minus. And then you divide that by the, all the factors of the leading coefficient Q, which is the number in front of the you know big factor or whatever. So there they are, plus or minus 1. So And then you all possible combinations would be plus or minus 15, 5, 3, and 1. They're right here. So then I started testing them. I tested, it looks like... Uh, a negative one first, it didn't work, so then I tested one, it worked. Then I tested negative three, and it worked. Boom. Again, you, uh, when I say testing, you do synthetic division using this factor. If you get a zero, that means it works. Keep going. If it doesn't get, like, so right here, I was testing the five, it didn't work, right? Then I tested the 15, it didn't work. So I knew my roots were one and three. Uh, and then I was looking for three roots because it's a power three, and this is a double root. If you plug this into your calculator, you'll see why. Number 43, again, uh, you're given a polynomial. You're going to start with your PQ uh, test to identify all possible roots. And then from there, you just start testing them. So I started with negative 1. I went through 1. And then I finally it clicked with uh, 2. So then I got a 0. And then I kept going. And then it finally clicked with the 3. And then I was left with this polynomial after the two iterations of synthetic division I had. 3x squared minus 9x minus 15 equals 0. Factor out a 3, and you're left with this polynomial, x squared minus 3x minus 5. This one doesn't factor any further, so you're going to have to apply the quadratic equation to it. There's your a, there's your b, and c. So here's the quadratic equation applied to this little trinomial left, and then it would spit out these two answers, plus or minus. And then I use my roots. So there they are, 2, there's negative 3, and then from the quadratic equation, I got 2 more. That's how I did 43. 45, same thing. You apply your PQ test, but we have a 6 here, so our Q got a little bit more complicated. There's a bunch of them. And then you continue to try each individual one, synthetic division, onto the coefficients until you get a 0. And it was 4 thirds, then you try 2, and then you're left with 6x minus 3 equals 0. It's plus 3 divided by 6, you get x equals a half, and there's, that's how you get your three roots. 47, same thing. Um, we have lots of different possibilities. So then you write down your coefficients, 2, negative 11, 4, 44, negative 48. <clears throat> and then start testing roots until you get to negative 2. And then that's what's left. And then you're going to try positive 2. And then the, this is what's left. Then you're going to try a 4. And then you're left with 2x minus 3 equals 0. Solve for x. And that's how you get all four roots using synthetic division. So start with the PQ. I always start with the small numbers, like 1 and negative 1. And then I kind of look at the problem and start, like, kind of playing with it. So as you fail at your test, you'll get closer and closer to the right answer. Because once it doesn't work, go ahead and cross it off.